Last week, a package arrived at a warehouse. Inside was a 55-pound worker who never needs a break. Price tag, $5,900, less than a used Honda Civic. This is the story of how humanity priced itself out of ex existence. Remember when we thought AI would politely wait its turn, that it would replace jobs gradually, giving us time to adapt? China shattered that fantasy with an announcement that should have made global headlines but barely caused a ripple. They're selling fully functional humanoid robots for less than the cost of two months' wages. While Silicon Valley burns gigawatts perfecting digital minds, Unitree started mass producing physical bodies. The convergence nobody saw coming has arrived wearing a price tag that makes human labor look like luxury goods. The Unitree R1 stands at just over 5 feet tall, weighing 55 pounds, with 26 joints providing full range of motion. Voice recognition, image processing, multimodal AI brain, which just means it can sing and dance in color at the same time, drawing you a, a nice, happy little tree. But those specs miss the real revolution. The price changes everything. At 5900 bucks. Chinese manufacturers created an economic no-brainer. They built a permanent worker that costs less than a vacations at Secrets and a Grill. Consider the warehouse employee making, making 15 bucks an hour. Annual cost to employers is roughly $35,000 with benefits. Unitry R1 pays for itself in eight weeks at that rate. After that, it's just straight cash, homie, as Randy Moss would say. Recent MIT research suggests superintelligence could drive 20% annual economic growth. Buried in the footnotes, wages for most could be capped by digital competitors. What that means is the economy explodes while us humans implode. The economy doesn't need you or me as a consumer. It's evolving past us. First, the wealthy sell to each other. Luxury goods, bespoke services, you know, customized services for, for the wealthy exclusive experiences. You know, Ferrari doesn't lose sleep over the fact that us normal people can't afford their cars. I don't think that keeps any of them up at night. When the top 1% controls 90% of the wealth, they become the only market that matters. Then comes phase two. Google's already building AI to AI advertising that we touched on a couple of episodes ago, machines negotiating with machines. Your Walmart AI agent haggling with supplier algorithms, no human fingers touching the transaction. An entire economy of silicon entities trading, trading digital goods at the speed of light. Finally, the concept of consumption itself becomes archaeological. When production costs hit zero and machines handle distribution, why maintain the fiction of a consumer economy? The owners of capital won't need customers. They'll need energy computing power, and raw materials. You know, the things they're hoarding right now. If you read any headlines whatsoever. The MIT research dances around this truth, but the math is merciless. 20% growth will cap human wages equals a prosperity graph that looks like a middle finger. The economy rockets skyward while humanity flatlines at survival. They're not building a world without jobs. They're building a world without consumers. And in that world, your economic relevance ranks somewhere between a VHS tape and a Betamax. Physical replacement represents only half the extin extinction event. Walmart revealed how service workers die algorithmically through an AI named Sparky. If you're going to kill us, you might as well make it funny. Sparky. Their announcement wrapped the apocalypse in corporate speak, as they always do, but the message rang clear. These AI agents will become, quote, the primary way people engage with Walmart, end quote. Sparky plans your parties, manages your shopping lists, and peers into your refrigerator to suggest recipes. Where else does it peer? Seven and a half minutes, the average conversation length. That's a lot longer than most humans want to talk to other humans at Walmart. Get out of my way, you fat person. 35% of all Walmart AI interactions now happen through voice. No screen, no typing, pure conversation with something that sounds human, acts human, but costs pennies per interaction instead of $15 per hour. Microsoft's AI CEO, Mustafa Solomon, revealed something that should chill your vodka tonic. 
Don't mind if I do. Their co-pilot will age. It will have a room that it lives in. I'm not kidding. That's what he said. You can charge it rent. You can call the police on it for smoking hash and stinking up the joint at 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, maybe he didn't say those last two things. But think about that. They're building beings, not tools. Digital entities with personal histories, favorite sports teams. Kansas City! Still baseball season, though. Cardinals. Yeah, yeah, you Cub fans, shut up. I know you're in first place. Or in Milwaukee might be. We'll find out soon. Uh, I think Milwaukee is. All right, well, just as long as the Cardinals aren't, it's time to sell. Come on. They wake up at 8 a.m., check their calendars, respond to emails they received overnight. You know, just like a lot of us. Lena AI took this further. Their AI colleagues arrive with full identities. Names like Sarah Chen and Marcus Johnson, email addresses, phone numbers, Slack profiles showing their interests and skills. I'm not making this up. This is real. They'll ask human colleagues when they need help, creating the illusion of collaboration while slowly making their human counterparts redundant. Hi, I'm Mr. Redundant. Nice to meet you, Mr. Redundant. One major industrial co company predicts these AI colleagues will boost productivity by 50%. The AI works alongside you, learning your job, becoming indispensable. Then one day, management realizes that the AI colleagues all they need. Hey, please hit the like and subscribe if you haven't. I'd appreciate it. While robots take our jobs and AI steals our identities, the fin financial system builds escape routes for humanity from humanity itself. Gross. Congress accidentally enabled this through the Genius Act. <laughs> Cheat. Didn't see that coming. Congress naming something the Genius Act. Creating a parallel payment system through stable coins. Walmart is exploring its own digital currency now. Amazon, too. Soon major corporations will pay their robot workers in currencies humans can barely access. Didn't we already do this with the uh, company store? You know, the old Tennessee Ernie Ford song? Uh, I owe my soul to the company store. I could sing it, but I don't want to. My wife just said hello. She would hear me singing, and that would be bad. Sam Altman, the OpenAI chat GPT guy, told the Federal Reserve something banking executives already know. AI will handle 40% of all banking tasks by December. This December, 2025. 40%. J.P. Morgan processes millions of trades. Morgan Stanley manages trillions in assets. Bank of America serves millions of customers all racing to implement AI that makes human bankers as obsolete as condoms at a vasectomy party. And what's the government's response to all of this? Doge deployed, deployed something called the AI Deregulation Decision Tool, which I couldn't come up with an acronym. That's amazing that the government came up with a program without an acronym. Its mission eliminated 100,000 federal regulations by January 2026. That number just staggers your mind. What would take humans 3.6 million hours to accomplish doing this? The AI completes in 36, not 36 million hours, 36 hours. HUD and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau now writes 100% of deregulations using AI. We're asking AI to decide which rules protecting humans should be eliminated. <laughs> That's like asking a Led Zeppelin to write better church hymns. The AI optimizes for efficiency, and us human types are inefficient by nature. These synchronized events, they're forming a pattern. I mean, you've probably already seen it. Physical workers face $5,900 robots that never tire or retire. Service workers face AI agents that customers prefer. Knowledge workers compete with systems that outthink them. The financial system abandons human participants and comes up with new currency while the government dismantles protections. Even medicine surrenders. Cleveland Clinic now performs heart surgery through tiny incisions using robotic systems. The robots never shake. They never tire after eight hours. They never have bad days. Patients recover faster. Complications drop. The economic argument for human surgeons dwindles. You know, we kept asking when AI would become truly intelligent. That seems to be the wrong question. The right question is, when would humans become economically obsolete? 
Well, I'm afraid that happened with that $5,900 price tag. China manufactures more than robots. They manufacture the end of human economic relevance. Every unit sold pushes another human from employed to unemployable. Not because we lack skills, but because we require food, shelter, and a little thing called dignity. The robots are here. The AI has personalities. The financial system abandons us. The government eliminates protections. This reads like science fiction, but plays out in earnings reports. Every corporation racing to cut costs, boost efficiency, eliminate the expensive human element. We're losing to basic economics, not superintelligence. I mean, of course, companies will choose workers that cost $5,900 once over $35,000 annually. Of course, customers prefer AI that never has a bad day. Of course, governments will use AI to eliminate inefficient regulations. Humans became expensive, so humans are becoming extinct. I'm Rod Miller, and at the current exchange rate, I'm worth about one-third of one of those robot dogs you've seen on TV. Game over and insert coin, although I guess the robots can do that now, too. I'll see you in the next episode, maybe. Ha, 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 